watching the television monitors at the racetrack or from an off-track facility is a big part of scoreboard watching, as we say in other sports, as it pertains to thoroughbred harness and American quarter horse racing. The tote board that we see on the television monitors is basically like a drive through window menu. It's going to tell you what's available, what the price is, and when it's available. Let's go through this example from Suffolk Downs outside of Boston, Massachusetts. The track is irrelevant. Most track setups on their TV feeds look very similar. The wagering information will be to the left of the screen. The time of day and conditions will be across the top. And in the middle to the right, you will see the live video feed from the particular racetracks. Here at Suffolk Downs, race number seven listed across the top of the mantle. The MTP is the key thing you need to know as a beginner. MTP stands for minutes to post. So in this case we are four minutes away from race number seven the track condition is listed as fast on dirt tracks you'll have fast good muddy or sloppy depending on the amount of moisture on the particular racetrack a fast track is what we have for today the time of day it's straight up tea time four o'clock in this particular example now the key you want to see in any odd screen and TV feed is down the left side of the screen, the chicklets as we call them. Those are the numbers of the horses in today's particular race that we're looking at. So the one and one A in red, followed by the two, three, four, all the way down to number nine. They each have a color coded system that will match the saddle towel that each horse wears. So the three is in blue and the three will be in blue in every race that you see throughout the day. Now we use this example because there's a 1 and a 1A listed. That would be a mutual betting entry. Owned by the same owners in many jurisdictions and states, those horses are required to run together as a coupled entry to protect the wagering interests of the public. So if you bet the 1, you would also get the 1A when you have a mutual entry. Now look to the right of the chicklets. You're going to see a series of numbers in black fonts. The 1 in this case, SCR listed next to it, is scratched. So the one will not run today, either for medical or trainer uh, decisions and a reason for not running in this particular race. The 1A will run in this race, however, and the current odds are at 3, which is to be read as 3 to 1. When you don't see a number behind the odds, it's assumed to be to 1. So number 2 is 8 to 1. Number 4 is 7 to 1. Now look at numbers 3 and 5. They have odds that are 5 to 2 and 9 to 2, by example. Essentially, that means 2.5 to 1 on number 3 and 4.5 to 1 on number 5. But the easy way to figure these out from a payoff standpoint is the number on the right is the amount you have to bet to profit the number on the left. So with number 3, for every $2 you bet, you would profit 5 if that horse wins. So a win bet on number 3 for $2 would return $7, netting you that $5 profit. The same goes for the assumptions of horses to one. The number two, for instance, eight to one odds. For every $1 you bet, you get an $8 profit. So therefore, a $2 bet would get you a $16 profit and return you $18. So a $2 win bet on number two would return 18 bucks. If you get into the more exotic wagers, as we say, grouping multiple horses together, how you find out what those payoffs would be in the exactas or the daily doubles are denoted in the next two columns. You see the column that says EX, three and. That means exacta, three and. If you bet an exacta, which is the first two horses to finish in a particular race, these are the payoffs if number three wins. Three with the 1A would pay $21. Three with the two would pay $149. There's a dash next to three and three because the three cannot run first and second in the same race. Three and four, for instance, would pay $124 and so forth down the line. Now onto the daily double payoffs. Those are listed next to the exactas. You'll see with the yellow font at the top, DBL 3N. These are the daily doubles with the three winning the particular race here in race number seven. Now daily doubles make you pick the winner of the race in the current race as well as the next race. So you're trying to pick the winner of two successive races. The daily double with number three winning race seven to number one in the next race would pay $169. And you would read those down the line for all the horses in the next race. That tells you how to read the exacta and the daily double will pays or probable payouts as they're sometimes called. Reading across that line on the second deck, you'll see win, $3,116. That means currently that's how much money is bet in the win pool. So all the betting around the country in this particular race at this juncture is $3,116 on straight win bets. 
The exacta pool, the total amount bet in exacta wagers is 41.28, and in the daily doubles, that number is 2,129. You should note that the odds will cycle every 90 seconds and close at post time, although often there will be a tick after the race starts to funnel in those last wagers right as wagering closed. That's a short look at how to read the odds on the tote board. It'll be your guide throughout the day. Understanding how to read the past performances is the foundation of the handicapping process. Once we understand what the information means, we can then begin to learn how to interpret it and create our own opinions. That's the greatest thing about horse racing. Everyone has an opinion. That's what makes it challenging, fun, and if you're right and wager, you can get paid for it. Let's take a look at the first race run at Arlington Park on Saturday, May 25th, 2013. We'll start at the very top with the distance and the conditions of the race, and then we'll take you through the past performances of a horse. This race is run over six furlongs on the poly track. Six furlongs is a sprint race. Races run at distances less than a mile are considered sprints for horses who are faster without as much stamina. Races run over a distance of a mile or longer are called route races for horses that have more stamina and want to run further distances. The condition of this race is a $25,000 waiver claiming race. Now what that means is the majority of the horses in this race are for sale for $25,000. The only ones that waive the claiming price are horses who have not yet run in 2013. If you're interested in owning a racehorse and you find a trainer and get the proper licensing, you can own any one of these racehorses with the exception of the number two little Kincaid for $25,000. The purse of this race is $23,000. 60% of that winning purse goes to the winning connections, the owner of the racehorse that gets the job done. 10% of that 60% goes to the jockey. 10% of that 60% also goes to the winning trainer. Now this race is for three-year-olds and upward who have never won two races. So all of the horses in this race have a maiden victory under their belt, but they have yet to win a second time. As you can see, three-year-olds will carry 118 pounds. Any horse four-year-old and up will carry 124 pounds. Let's take a look at number four, Sacred Range. As you can see, the horse will be carrying the yellow saddle towel making this horse identifiable during the race. The morning line odds on number four sacred range are three to one. That's one handicapper's opinion as to what the final odds will be at post time. It's basically just a gauge. Next, you'll see the owner of the horse, Hondo Ranch Incorporated of Frank and Sharon Kirby. The silks the horse will wear, navy, red emblem, white stars, red stripes on white sleeves, and a navy cap. Again, making this horse identifiable not only to the public, but to the track announcer. The trainer of Sacred Range is Frank J. Kirby, with a record of 39 starts, just one win, 5 seconds and 5 thirds, a win percentage of 2.56% at this Arlington meeting. The jockey and trainer combination... Seven starts, no wins, one second, two thirds. They have yet to win a race together. The jockey of this horse is James Graham. James Graham has raced 47 times at Arlington this season with seven wins, nine seconds, eight thirds, and a win percentage of just under 15%. Next to the right of that, we're going to see the career and yearly record and also distance and surface record for this particular horse, Sacred Range. Here's the horse's record in 2013. Three starts, no wins, no seconds, and no thirds. Earnings this year, $2,690. In 2012, Sacred Range started 11 times. One win, no seconds, two thirds, and earnings of over $38,000. For this horse's lifetime, 14 starts, one win, no seconds, two thirds, earnings of over forty one dollars this is an important piece of information. How has Sacred Range fared over the Arlington all-weather track? The surface he will be racing over today. Seven starts, one win, no seconds, one-third, earnings of $36,000. As you can see, the majority of this horse's earnings have come over Arlington's all-weather surface. It's not applicable in this particular race, but on the turf course, Sacred Range has one start with no wins, no seconds, no thirds. On a wet turf, 
No starts, thus no win seconds or thirds. At today's distance, the six furlong distance, Sacred Range has raced four times. No wins, no seconds, no thirds, with earnings of over $3,000. And overall, at all weather tracks all over the country, again, seven starts, one win, no seconds, one third. All of this horse's all-weather performances have come at Arlington Park, his home track. Under the morning line odds, you'll see that Sacred Range is up for sale for that claiming price of $25,000. Underneath his name, we'll find pedigree information on Sacred Range. Sacred Range is a dark bay or brown gelding, four years old. The sire is Indy Snow. The dam is classy but nasty, and the grandsire on the mother's side is Sky Classic. You'll see where Sacred Range was bred in the state of Illinois by Sharon Kirby, and the birth date of this horse is April 10th, 2009. Let's go back to the front of the pedigree line for Sacred Range. We'll see where he is a gelding four years old. Now, horses upwards of four years old, two, three, and four, are called colts. Horses five-year-old and older are called horses. Horses who have been cut, such as Sacred Range, are called geldings. For sake of an example, let's fast forward to a later race on this Arlington card and take a look at number eight, Hu Wai, and her pedigree line. You'll see where she is a chestnut mare, seven years old. Female horses up until the age of four are called fillies. Five-year-olds and up are called mares. Now, male horses are never allowed to run in races restricted to females, but on occasion, you will see a female take on the boys. Remember when Zenyatta won the Breeders' Cup Classic? Now let's take a look at the past performance line for Sacred Range. The most recent race will always be listed on the top. In this case, it was May 5th, 2013. Sacred Range that day ran in the fifth race at Arlington Park. Now, we mentioned earlier that Arlington has a synthetic polytrack racing surface. Because of the way the racetrack is constructed in both material and drainage, polytracks and synthetic racing surfaces will always be fast. You'll see that denoted by the FT. If you look one race down, you'll see on March 10, 2013, in the sixth race at Hawthorne, Sacred Range raced over a sloppy racetrack. Hawthorne Race Course has a dirt track. That day the track was sloppy. That means it was extremely wet. You'll want to pay attention to track conditions and how the horses performed over them when you're handicapping races. Again, further down on November the 8th at Hawthorne from 2012 in the 8th race, you'll see where Sacred Range performed in a turf race. A T with a circle around it indicates a turf race. That particular day, the turf was rated firm. And further down on October the 19th at Hawthorne, Sacred Range raced over a muddy and sealed track. Not quite sloppy, on the verge of getting more and more dry, but in this case, rated as muddy. Main track conditions are fast, good, muddy, and sloppy. Turf conditions are firm, good, yielding, and soft. And once again, the poly track or synthetic racing surfaces are always fast. Let's go back to the May 5th race for Sacred Range and look at the distance of the race. It's one mile. That's two furlongs longer than today's race. There are eight furlongs in a mile. Today's race is six furlongs or three quarters of a mile. Next, you're going to see a small number 48, which is basically inconsequential for newcomer handicappers and basically for all handicappers in general. It's the run-up distance from the time the clock is first set off when timing the race. Next, you're going to see the fractional times in this particular race. Now, these fractional times are not set necessarily by sacred range. They're set by the leading horse at each point of call. 48.25 for the half mile. 114.11 for six furlongs, and a final time for a mile over the poly track in 139.47. At this particular time, times should be inconsequential to the new handicapper. Remember, the track may be much faster one day than it is the next. Don't concern yourself with times at this point. Next, you're going to see a three with an arrow up. That means every horse in the race was at least three years old. Now, thoroughbred racehorses can begin racing as early as age two, but no older horses will ever race against a two-year-old. There are some races restricted to just three-year-olds. In this particular case, this race is for three-year-olds and older. That means three, four, five, eight, even ten-year-old horses are eligible to run in this particular race. 
Next, you're going to see the condition of the race. Claiming $25,000 for non-winners of two lifetime. Again, the exact same condition as today's race. Next, we see a very important piece of information for preliminary newcomer handicappers. It's the Equibase speed figure. This number will tell you how fast this horse ran on this particular day. Use the speed figures as a guide as to who is capable of winning the race. If you see a horse consistently racing in the 80s, racing against a horse who's consistently racing in the 60s, chances are the higher number the better. The horse with the higher speed figures is the faster, more accomplished, and more talented racehorse. Next, you're going to see the position the horse broke out of the starting gate once the race began. Sacred Range broke out second from the starting gate. Next, you're going to see a little story on how the horse performed that day. It shows you how they ran from start to finish. At the very beginning of the race, Sacred Range was in seventh position, eight lengths behind the leader. As they progressed onward, once again, Sacred Range still seventh, eight and a quarter lengths behind the leader. Continuing the progression, Sacred Range is six now, moving up, only four lengths behind the leader. At the top of the stretch, Sacred Range still four lengths behind the leader, but he's moved up into fourth position. And at the finish line, Sacred Range finishes fourth, four lengths behind the winner of the race. Next, you're going to see the name of the jockey that rode that day. It was Seth Martinez. Now, we established earlier that James Graham is the rider. At least in the recent running lines, we don't see James Graham unless we look way back on September the 15th of 2012, and as you can see, the last time James Graham rode Sacred Range, he won. Something to seriously take into consideration. Next, you're going to see the weight that the horse carried on May the 5th, 122 pounds. Now, the average jockey weighs between 115 and 118. If the horse is assigned 122 pounds, they will have to add a series of pounds to the saddle in order to make that weight. That's why after every race you see a jockey get on the scale to make sure they're carrying the correct assigned weight for that particular race. The next piece of information is the small b. That indicates that Sacred Range was wearing blinkers. Blinkers are a piece of equipment that help a horse concentrate and focus on the race at hand. Horses can actually see to the side and even behind them. By putting on the blinkers, horses are unable to see next to them and then focus on the straight ahead task at hand. The big L stands for Lasix. Lasix is a diuretic medication that helps a horse breathe and thus helps them perform to top standards during the course of the race. 85 to 90 percent of horses who race in the year 2013 use the diuretic medication called Lasix indicated by the L. Up next is the odds the horse went off in that particular race. Sacred Range on May the 5th at Arlington went off at odds of 5.10 to 1. He was a middle price horse that day and ran to his odds, finishing 4th. Sacred Range was 5 to 1, a square priced horse, and finished 4th just out of the top 3. Next up, you're going to see the top 3 finishers in that race. The winner was my contender by a head over my jokester who was second, three and three quarter lengths ahead of Raphael who finished third. Now Raphael was a neck in front of Sacred Range who finished fourth. As we look around the past performances, a couple of other things that need to be explained. First of all, down one line in Sacred Range past performances, you will see a horse named Too Much Talk who's in italics. That means the next time Too Much Talk ran, he won. Anytime you see a horse in italics, that means the next time they performed, they won their very next start. If we look up next to another horse in this race by the name of I'm Old School, he's the number one running against Sacred Range in this race on May 25th. You will see in his past performance line from February 17th of 2013, there is a horse in bold in this race, La Panada. If you see a horse in bold when scouring through the past performance lines, look around the rest of the PPs for the race. You're bound to find La Panada because he's also racing on this day. If you see a horse in bold, that means he's a common opponent for this particular race running on this particular day. Let's go back to Sacred Range and get the short comment, which is another very important piece of information. It tells you a little story about how the horse ran on this day. 
You'll see the short comment on Sacred Range from May the 5th, split three wide, mild bid. That means this horse split horses while racing three wide and made a mild bid. The past performance lines pretty much told us that. The horse was seventh and moved up to fourth, therefore a mild bid. You'll see some of the other past performance lines and short comments on Sacred Range. One in particular, you'll see bumped break, pinched break. That means the horse got off to a troubled start. Look for trouble lines in the short comments. That may mean the horse had an excuse for racing poorly on a particular day. Next up, another very important piece of information. How many horses were in the race that he ran in that particular afternoon? In this case, it was seven. Sacred Range finished fourth out of seven horses. Now, finishing fourth out of seven would not be as impressive, theoretically, as if the horse finished fourth out of 12. Always pay attention to how many horses there were in the race. It's also important to note that beaten lengths can be a more important piece of information than where the horse actually finished. Say a horse finished seventh, beaten five lengths. That may actually be a more impressive performance than a horse finishing fourth, 12 and three quarter lengths behind the winner. Above the short comment, you're going to see the class rating. The higher the number, the better. That tells you how much class a horse has, how difficult the competition is that this horse has been facing in the recent races. Let's swing back to the middle of the past performance line and see where Sacred Range in this race is carrying 121 pounds, spotting his three-year-old rivals six pounds. Now let's go to the bottom of Sacred Range's past performance lines to find the workouts. This horse raced on May the 5th. He's had three workouts since last race. May the 16th, 2013 at Arlington Park, five furlongs on a fast poly track, he worked out 103 breezing. Now what breezing means is the horse did it all on his own. He was not asked for his best by the rider. Now if you look at Little Kincaid's workout on May the 19th, you'll see that the horse worked four furlongs in 46.80 handily. What handily means is the horse was asked for more speed and encouraged by the rider. A breezing workout in a fast time is more impressive than a handily workout in a fast time. As we go back to Sacred Range's workout on May the 16th, we'll see where he worked out 16th fastest out of the 19 horses that trained and worked out over five furlongs on the poly track that particular morning. Sacred Range also had workouts on May 23rd and June 5th, a bullet on that day, as indicated by the bullet in front of the five. He worked four furlongs over the poly track in 47.20 breezing, the fastest workout at that distance on that track that morning of 33 horses, indicating that Sacred Range may be ready to run a big race in this particular spot. We'd like to thank Equibase Company for the use of their past performances in this introductory handicapping lesson. Understand how to read the past performances. Interpret them. Formulate your own opinion. Watch races and understand how it works. That's how you're best going to enjoy this great puzzle of thoroughbred racing. It's your first time at the racetrack, you want to enjoy yourself, and you want to pick some winners, make a little bit of money. If you've never been to the harness races, it can seem intimidating trying to pick a winner. There's an old saying at the racetrack, if you don't have a program, you can't tell your horse, or you can't tell a horse without reading a program. I think that's how it goes. Anyway, you can increase your chances of winning and increase your chances of having some fun at the racetrack by learning how to read a program. Step one is buying one. You want to buy a program first right here at the program stand. So you take out your dollar, if I can find it. <laughs> you give it to Diane right there. Thank you. And she gives me a program right there. there. Now you're all set. Let's show you how to read the program. All right, now we have our program and we're going to analyze the past performance information that's contained in the program here. It's fun, it's challenging, and it's relatively easy if you take it one step at a time. And of course, step one is learning how to read the past performance information in here. Learn how to read a program. I'm going to show you how. Let's start with a look at the chart line of the legendary pacer. The horse's name is Jenna's Beach Boy. This can be found near the front of each official racing program as an example. His program or betting number is two. The saddle pad color is blue. 
and his post position is also 2 in this case. The date of his most recent race, June 22, 1996. It was the seventh race at the Meadowlands, a one-mile track. Purse or prize money was $200,000. Track condition rated good, and the temperature that night was 75 degrees. Horses were retained in a stakes barn race before the race, and Jenna's Beach Boy raced with a common medication called Lasix. Class of the race, this was a stakes race for free-for-all or top-level pacers. Distance of the race was the standard one mile. The leader's time at the quarter marker was 26 and 1 fifth seconds. The half was 53 seconds and 4 fifths. Three quarters, 1 minute, 20 seconds and 2 fifths. Time of the winner of the race, 1 minute, 47 and 3 fifths seconds. It was a track record. Jenna's Beach Boy started from post position two. He was in second place at the quarter, just a head behind the leader at that point. He was second at the half, still a head off the pace setter. Second at three quarters, now a length and three quarters behind. He was second at the top of the stretch, a length and a quarter off the pace. He rallied, he came on to finish first. He won the race, winning by one length. His final quarter time was a very fast 26 and 4 fifth seconds. Individual time of the horse in this case was also the winner's time, 1 minute 47 and 3 fifth seconds. His closing odds were 80 cents to the dollar for 4 to 5. He paid $3.60 for a $2 win bet. His driver was Bill Fay, trainer Joel Holloway. Jenna's Beach Boy was the winner, Riyadh finished second, Trump Casino was the third place finisher, and there were eight starters in this race. Let's go back to the left now. Below Jenna's Beach Boy's name are his earnings in his last five starts. Above his name, Bill Fay is the driver, followed by the age of Bill Fay, his driving colors, brown and orange, and his current statistics. His trainer is Joe Holloway along with his record. Jenna's Beach Boy is bay in color. He's a male horse or a stallion as opposed to a gelding or a female horse, which is a filly or mare. His sire, Beach Towel. His dam, Five O'Clock Cindy, whose sire is Cam Fella. The horse is owned by L&L Divisor Partnership of Holland, Michigan. Back to the right. His records for the past two seasons. In 1996, Jenna's Beach Boy made 10 starts, scored six wins, a second, and a third. His earnings, $264,800. His best winning time, that track record, one minute, 47 and 3 fifth seconds. Below that, his record for 1995. Then his lifetime statistics and breeders, who are also his owners in this case. Even though the program is an excellent guide, it only tells part of the story. You can actually see for yourself what happened. Look at the past performances here at our replay center. Watch the races over and over again to see what happened. Look to the past to better predict the future. So now you know how to read a racing program. You're well on your way to picking winners at the racetrack. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask any one of us here at the racetrack. Looking for a fun and easy way to learn more about horse racing? Night School, Tuesday nights. Enjoy access to top racing insiders via chat, video, and radio. Night School caters to fans at all levels. Miss a class? Read the archive. Night School, Tuesday nights. See you then.